free. Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Uh, this is a snapshot of the type of services we provide. Uh, if you talk with other agencies, you'll find some similarities. Um, so uh, it's a little bit of an eye chart, but uh, I'll walk you through it very quickly. Um, here in the teal, we have, uh, so th this really represents the type of services that an agency might provide. So independence and wellness, um, we spend a lot of time with folks in Alzheimer's um, uh, focusing on obviously companionship, providing them uh, with housekeeping services, uh, helping them do the laundry. Uh, don't really want someone uh, walking down a flight of deep stairs, uh, you know, to go do the laundry in the basement where it's always been. So you're hiring your, your caregiver to help you with uh, housekeeping and, and laundry chores of that sort. Medicaid Medication reminders are a big, big, big uh, service that we provide all the time. So while we're there doing the laundry and making sure the bathroom is clean and washing the floors, you know what, Mrs. Jones, it's time to take your 10 a.m. pill. So that's what a medication re reminder is. We document that and there's proof that that was actually done. What if the pill is not in there? So um, that's the other thing. Oh, you know what? Something happened overnight and the pill box spilt, so then there's a call to the agency to say, Mrs. Jones can't take her 10 a.m. pill because it's not here. So that's a call maybe to the daughter to say the pill is missing. Um, um, that maybe is a call to the physician to say, you know, they missed the pill, is that an issue? So lots of different scenarios can help. But you're paying the agency to oversee that care versus hiring someone directly. Um, over in sort of the gold color, personal ADLs, we've talked about that, so I won't talk about that uh, again, but those are uh, all services we provide. And then we do other things, which sort of this uh, orange color is uh, kind of the I call it kind of the more of the fun stuff. A lot of medica a lot of appointments to medical appointments. Unfortunately, transportation becomes a big, big issue in our senior community. So we can help get folks to and from an appointment. Um, we can help get them to the appointment while the adult child drives across town because let's say the appointment's in Worcester and they work in Worcester, but mom lives in Northboro. So rather than the daughter having to come all the way to Northboro to pick up mom or dad, we can bring them there and then maybe the daughter brings them home. So again, kind of getting creative with the type of solutions that we can provide. Um, we've taken folks to weddings. This is sort of one of my favorite stories um, and a true one. Family, uh, granddaughter was getting married, or great-granddaughter as it would be, and so great-grandmother still uh, alive and, and pretty well, but had Alzheimer's, had some personal care needs. The family wanted her at this wedding. And so the family called us and said, how can we get mom there? Because we want mom there, but you know we're gonna be really focused on the granddaughter's wedding, or the great-granddaughter's wedding. Um, so our caregiver went, dressed not necessarily in scrubs or anything else, dressed up you know, uh, kind of as you would wedding attire, but was there to care for great grandma. Great grandma was able to be there for what was a very, very special event for the entire family, be part of pictures. And, and so the family had that, you know, that uh, grandma, great grandma didn't miss out on anything, but yet she was cared for in a way that she deserved to be uh, cared for and respected. And then finally, uh, the brown area. Um, this really varies based on agency. I mentioned in the beginning we're a non-medical model. Right at Home actually um, offers medical uh, services. We have nurses on staff that can provide skilled nursing care. Um, not all agencies do, but sort of the, the brown area is, uh, uh, is unique to each, um, each uh, agency. And, and an example of the, uh, uh, what, what might be unique is the medication management. Assisted livings do that. They um, are able to manage the medication we can do that in the home as well. And what does that mean? It means that, you know, you have all those pill boxes, you have like I take 11, you know, I don't, but you know, you take 11 pills a day or mom does or your spouse does. We can actually fill the pill boxes, our nurses do that. Um, um, we call the physician, call the pharmacy, coordinate the pickups, coordinate the refills, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of what medication management is. Okay, so how do you pay for it? All right, so the good news, as we've already talked about, is that there are definitely some benefits. So right at home, along with many other agencies in the area, and you can find them on caregivingmetrowest.org, are contracted with BayPath. So BayPath really vets us as, a, as an entity of the state. They vet us. We sign a contract with them. We have to pass, uh, do certain things. We have to uh, do background checks of our employees. We've got to train them a certain way. We've got to follow cases a certain way, et cetera, et cetera. I won't bore you with the details. It's far too late. 
but we participate in the home care program. So you could, you could contract with a home care agency really through BayPath and get whatever hours, three hours, 10 hours, you know, in some cases up to 40 hours a week, and that's how your relationship perhaps with Right at Home would be. Or Right at Home offers, excuse me, BayPath says, we'll authorize you for three hours of homemaking and eight hours of personal care in a week. And you say, that's great, but I need 12 more hours. Well, you work with Right at Home through Baypath and then, or any other agency, and then you contract with us privately. So you pay for those 12 hours privately through your own personal assets, which is sort of the, the nest egg there. Arthur mentioned the Veterans Aid and Attendance Benefit as a benefit when you're in an assisted living facility. That is also a benefit that can be used um, for home care. And those same numbers apply, the same qualifications apply. The sad news is that neither Medicare, neither Medicaid directly pay for the services. So, you know, we all sort of, being in this industry, um, just shake our heads. It's such a vital need, um, um, uh, but it, it's the reality of where we're at. Some commercial health insurance supplements, like United Healthcare, are starting to pay for non-medical services. So whether you like or don't like Obamacare, it may be one of those long-term benefits of sort of uh, healthcare reform. So we'll see. Um, one of the things you want to make sure is that when you are working with an agency, and I do have some brochures in the back that I would encourage you to uh, take, um, it's really you want to ask questions. So um, just sort of like Arthur was saying, call Baypath. Who are you contracted with? They've sort of pre-vetted everyone. Again, your tax dollars at work, um, whether you're talking about an agency or a home care agency or a, an assisted living. But you want to ask questions of the agency. It's your money. You are sending a stranger into the home. So you want to know, what does the agency do? Do they actually hire the caregivers directly or are these independent contractors? In our case, there are employees. We're responsible for their, uh, their workers' comp. We're responsible for all their background checks, all their training, et cetera, et cetera. I won't, again, bore you with the details. Um, but you want to ask, are they licensed? Are they insured? What if something happens in your home? Most folks say, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to hire privately. That's great. Families have had great success stories prior to folks like, uh, um, I mean, uh, prior to services like ours being in place, my own family back in the early 90s hired privately and we had pretty good success. So it's not to say there aren't great folks that can hire, um, can be hired directly, but you have to be aware of the risks. If they fall down in your house, you own the problem, okay? And, and you just have to be aware of that from a, from a risk perspective. Um, uh, agencies are required to provide uh, uh, or, or provide ongoing skills and uh, training, uh, example Alzheimer training um, that uh, many of our caregivers actually go through. And the key here too is daily caregiver supervision and, and management. So you are paying an agency to oversee the care. So if that pillbox isn't filled and mom was supposed to take the medication, our caregiver calls and says, that pill is not there for her to take, what do we do? Um, in the event that someone falls, you have someone there, we can call, you know, the, the caregiver could call and say, you know, this is what happened, a nurse could go out, um, whatever it is, but we're managing the care of, of all those instances. In the event a care, you know, it's gonna snow here, right now we're still having nice weather, in a couple months it's gonna actually, maybe sooner, if I have my way, because I like to ski, but um, it's gonna start to snow. And when that happens, caregivers, you know, say, I can't drive in the snow. It's the agency's responsibility to find a caregiver that can go um, uh, to, to replace the caregiver that was supposed to be there. So that's sort of the ongoing care management and supervision. Okay? I think I'm just at the end here. Um, again, as a reminder, in addition to the care, it truly, truly is about providing care for the individual with Alzheimer's, but um, it is not selfish to give yourself a break and... Um, even if it's just for respite. I can't tell you how many families who are so hesitant, kind of not unlike what Trish was saying, you know, they kind of don't want to make that call. It can be f felt like, you know, maybe I'm a failure. I'm not providing the care for my mom or dad or my spouse. You know what? You, you cannot be a healthy caregiver, um, and the folks from the Alzheimer's Association will tell you this, and, and be a... Um, of benefit to your loved one if you yourself, sort of your cup isn't full. So, um, you know, Lots of great folks, lots of great resources. You just have to tap into them. Thank you, Sheldon. You can take it. So what I always tell clients, just to kind of close, what I always tell Frank is, you know, the worst thing you can do for Mary is drop dead, right? The world is going to get much worse for your wife if you're not around. 
So for, it, for, for, per, for the purposes of you know, working the plan out, you need to figure that out. You can't have a plan that results in you dropping dead and this other person just being totally alone. Finally, the goal of all of this is to sleep well at night. That's what I always tell my clients. Maybe this is not relevant to you, maybe it is, but that's kind of the point. So you want to figure out what this package is that's going to make you sleep well at night. But remember, you have options. There are a lot of people you can talk to. Try to do that ahead of time. If you've got financial concerns, talk to somebody about it and do the math. Don't assume because your neighbor says this isn't going to work, the home care isn't going to work, the assisted living isn't going to work, that they're right. Talk to a professional, do the math. Um, finally, uh, uh, this presentation, while it will also be broadcast on uh, Northbro Cable, we also upload them to my YouTube channel, Frank and Mary's YouTube channel, really. And Frank and Mary are having a team this, this year that are walking in the annual Alzheimer's Walk, Sunday, September the 28th. If you want to go to our website and join our team, we'd love to see you there. In the long run, we really would like to have Julie out of a job, right? And I'd like to think when I get there that even though I can't do the crossword puzzle, I always tell people I don't mind if I have dementia as long as I'm 105. So I'd like to have some folks who have figured that out for me. Thank you very much. Any questions quickly and then we're done. Questions? And all these folks have agreed to stay after if, if you've got particular questions. Uh, if not, thank you very much. Could I have a round of applause for our wonderful uh, guests? Thank you all for coming.